Hello, hello, everybody. We are continuing our Ace Attorney journey, and tonight we will be seeing if we can finish off the Big Berry Big Top mystery, or if we'll be the ones who are made to look like clowns. And I don't like the look of that. But last time, we basically cut down the clown's testimony. It was quite weird. Thank you again for chat giving me the slight hits of like, hey, yeah, th these two things are weird with this testimony that you might not get, which I don't mind that much because they were very weird and I, I, missed, the bla I, I missed the blast burn on Maya's sleeve in the second case. I would never have gotten those. Eh, but last time, after we defeated the clown and did more investigating, we learned just a whole myriad of weirdness because I feel like the note that was made by Acro that said, I know you're the... I have definitive proof that you're the murderer. And, like, he used Regina as the transporter to get the note to the definitive person because d d I feel like that is definitive evidence that it's just like hey Acro like had a, a note that told somebody to be at the place where the ringmaster died at the time that the ringmaster died so shouldn't that be thing we'll just have to wait and see how things go but this case is all over the place, and I have no idea who the actual murderer is. Again, I am hedging my bets on it maybe being a team effort between Acro and Bat. Because maybe Bat is alive and has woken up from his coma. That's a, that's a theory of mine. And for whatever reason... They were targeting somebody else be over Lion, uh, the Lion Leon, sneezing and biting his uh, brother Bat's head. Because again, the big box that the Ringmaster was slumped over had the uh, cafeteria pepper, which caused presumably... Leon to uh, snap his jaws when he sneezed. We'll just have to wait and see. That is my theory. At least going again. They have brought too much attention to the tarped thing in the, like, employee living space plaza. That it has to be a machine, like a crane. And that was used to, I don't know, bash the poor man poor ringmaster's head in with the bust of max i don't know anyway december 30 9 41 a.m good morning max oh yeah good morning sweeties you don't seem like your usual sparkling self today i'm always like this before i go in front of an audience i'm working up to it tee -hee. don't get nervous maxie here have a glass of milk that's a carton. She really isn't the sharpest tool in the shed, is he? R Regina! How fabulous! My sweetie pie, my sweetie pie princess! You came to watch my performance today? Of course I did. Mo told me that I should come and watch this. Mo said that. So, what kind of performance will you put on today? Let me guess, you'll fly at the end? Uh, it's not that kind of show. Isn't that right, my sweeties? Huh? I think my sweetie pie princess doesn't... Yeah, she doesn't seem to realize what's going on. Or even where she is. Hmm. Well, Max, it looks like it's time to raise the curtain. I'll see you later. Today I'm just a member of the audience. Fabulous. Enjoy yourself out there. Good luck, Max. You're the best. I can't get a read on her if she's just a dumbass airhead or if she's actually sinister. Regina's different, don't you think, Nick? <laughs> Top of the morning to ya! Everybody, let's get ready to get stuck in legal limbo! How low can you go? M Mo. Top of the morning to ya, governor. Uh, top of the morning. That's the ticket! Attacking the day starts with the energy in the morning. 
the early bird gets the worm. But then again, worms lack higher brain function. <laughs> Here, Max, I brought you a present. Have some milk. Why is everybody giving him milk? I don't understand this. Oh my, uh, thanks. So how are you today, right? Well, got the feeling that today I'm gonna face off against the real culprit. You mean that, Acro? Huh? You think he did it? Be careful. He's used to putting his life on the line, literally. He's got guts to spare. If all I've got to worry about is how thin the tightrope is, I'm used to it already. It just means that I won't be able to press him like I can the other witnesses. What are you going to do? That is that a is that a, is that a warning that I, that the, is, is, is that a warning that I I can't really uh, press the man too much or I'm gonna get penalties? I'm gonna safe scum to hell. What are you gonna do then, Nick? I guess today we'll just have to do without our usual psychological warfare. Today we rely on evidence. It's the only way we'll get past Acro into the truth. You're right, but it's gonna be tough. Anyways, I want to make sure that Regina sees it all today. It's important. Then she'll finally have to deal with the reality of what happened to her father. You want us to make sure Regina watches? Yes. <laughs> why did I say it like that? Yes. Yeah, that's why I brought her here to the court today. What's that supposed to mean? She needs to know that when people die, they don't just become stars. Maybe I may be an old-fashioned clown, but I don't believe in people becoming stars. I wonder why he gave him milk and what, like, Regina gave him milk, but I wonder why Mo gave him milk as well. And Max got super scared of him there. That's very weird. But yeah, I don't know why the game... Like, seems to be amping up to like, oh, you can't use your psychological warfare. I'm going to press on statements that I think are pertinent. And I'll just be... Well, I, again, I could just save scum. Why not? I don't fear you. Court is now in session for the trial of Maximilian Galactica. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Very well. Miss Von Karma, you may proceed with your case. The prosecution would like to revise its previous theory of events. What's the meaning of this? We have discovered a new witness, or shall I say, a new eyewitness. One that saw Maximilian Galactica fly off from the scene of the crime. Order! Order! I had a feeling something like this would come up. Due to this revision, we are now prepared to explain how the defendant flew that night. An explanation the prosecution will present if the need so arises. In fact, my detective stayed up all night creating a mock-up of the scene on my orders. Poor gumshoe. Very well, please call your witness to the stand. Time to get to work, or shall I say, time to walk the courtroom tightrope. He even got to bring his birds. Name and occupation. Kin Dealing. But everyone calls me Acro. I'm employed as an acrobat at the Berry Big Circus. Where were you the night of the crime? I was in my room that night. If you look at the map, you will see the eyewitness's room is near the crime scene. My room is on the third floor. The crime scene is below my window. Hmm. The night of the crime, the witness saw something quite shocking. Would you tell us what you witnessed? Moke. What I witnessed. It was just after 10 p.m., and I was resting in my bed. Around that time, I heard a large thump noise from outside the window. Then a few moments later, I saw someone flying right by my window. It was Max Galactica. I only saw him from behind, but that's how it looked like. To be honest, when I saw that, I thought I was dreaming. Hmm, this witness's testimony matches up exactly with that of the clown. If that's the case, there is very little the prosecution need to add. All that's left is to explain how the defendant disappeared into the sky that night.
Really? Before we get that far, I'd like to cross-examine the witness. A foolish choice by a foolish fool who wishes to feel the foolish sadness of a sad fool. A man must know the proper timing for things, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Just like your old friend, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, did. Mr. Wright, do you have a problem with the witness's testimony? In the words of Miss Von Karma, may I quote yesterday's proceedings? There's no way that actually happened. Very well. You may proceed with your cross-examination. Hmm. It's a very simple one. I'll go ahead and save. I don't feel like I have a need to do, like, because I don't think any new information will be gotten from that. After 10 p.m., I was resting in my bed. Around that time, heard a large thump. I don't feel like we get anything because it'd be like, oh yes, thump, it sounds like somebody getting hit over the head. Then a few moments later, I saw someone flying right by my window. Again, I feel like this one isn't necessary to press on because of the next one. It's basically a continuation, as well as has important information, as well on top of the fact, I keep saying as well, meh. I only saw him from behind. Let's press on that. The light in your room was turned off then, right? That's true. I was going to bed after all. So if the light's off, you are still able to clearly see a human fly by your window. The safety lights lit things up enough for me to see. But honestly, there was only enough light for me to see the silhouette outside my window. It was the person's back, so I couldn't see the white roses on the front. Did you see any of the other symbols? I clearly saw the silk hat, as well as the cloak wrapped around his body. I'm convinced that the person I saw was Max Galactica. Hmm. The more I press him, the less results I seem to get. Maybe there was something fishy with his last bit of testimony? Yeah, because if you just saw his back, you couldn't really see anything. Not to mention, one thing that did jump into my mind, he had his silk hat, but the silk hat was off on the crime scene. So if it had the silk hat when it flew away, I feel like it would have not been at the crime scene at that point. There's a huge contradiction with that testimony that was just given. Objection. If there's a contradiction, then prove it with evidence. Hmm, she's right. Let's see some evidence. Do you have any evidence to support your claim of contradiction? Hat. You claim to have seen the exact same thing Mo saw that night. Do you stand by that? What do you mean? The silk hat. What about the silk hat? I saw it on Max's head as he flew by my window. Well, you should have tried looking down at, out of your window that night. That would have been quite difficult considering the state that I'm in. Just looking outside of the window was a tough enough challenge for me. That's a shame, because you would have noticed the silk hat found on the scene. That... that's the ringmaster's hat, right? Why would you, why would you think that? Afraid not. No matter how you look at it, this is the silk hat of Maximilian Galactica. What were you doing with this, Mr. Wright? Are you saying that Max has two silk hats? Nope. This is a handmade, one-of-a-kind model made only for Maximilian Galactica. Which means, Acro, that you, you've been fibbing on the stand! Order! Order! As always, it looks like someone just had to open their mouth before thinking. Are you okay, Nick? Well, I opened my big mouth and now I have to put... <laughs> have to back it up. How about it, Mr. Wright? What would cause this witness to commit perjury in this court today? Well, I am going off of the idea that he is potentially in league. He wrote... He wrote the note! He wrote the note saying, Hey, murderer, I know what you did. And then the ringmaster died that night. He said... He died that night. Acro wrote a note. Wrote just into the ether saying, Hey, come to this place at this time this night. The ringmaster went there that night, that time, and died. I feel like that's important. He's the culprit.
Your Honor, on this occasion, the defense accuses Acro himself. On this occasion... Uh, accuses Acro? What in the world are you accusing him of? Obviously, we accuse him of the murder of Mr. Russell Berry. Mr. Wright, are you serious? Deadly serious, Your Honor. <laughs> I think your trips to the circus have served you well. You seem to have learned how to try and grab at an audience's hearts and minds. Your Honor, don't allow yourself to be swayed by theatrics. Trying to wow the crowd with smoke and mirrors is the oldest bluff in the book. Really? If you don't believe me, just look at the witness. <gasps> He's calm enough for it to be almost scary. <laughs> okay, that's amusing. He is staying rather calm and collected. Mr. Dingling, do you have any response to the defense's accusation? I don't really need to say a thing, do I? What do you mean? Everyone, take a good look at me. I can't even stand up by myself, let alone leave the lodging house. But that's true. I understand that Mr. Wright is just trying to help his client. But to do this by accusing me of a murder, of all things... See, even a sliver of common sense makes it clear the accusation is ludicrous. She's right. Way to pick on the disabled, you heartless, cruel man. Phoenix is a poopy head. <laughs> See that, Mr. Phoenix, right? If you're trying to drum up support from the peanut gallery, that's how you do it. Ah. Uh. I think that's enough of this little game. I got a doctor's note to confirm that Acro is unable to stand up under his own power. Maybe the defense is planning on making a claim to counter this as well. I can hit the defense now. Acro had an accomplice. Well, hmm. Huh. Because my theory is that bad is okay, but I don't have evidence of that. It's just that we know Bat exists and supposedly is in the hospital, essentially brain dead, slash in a coma. So I'm just trying to think. Hmm. Because if we go off of information of people that, then again, Regina did, quote unquote, like, fairy passage for his note, but... I'm going to say that he didn't, because again, my theory is that his brother is an accomplice, but under the evidence that we currently have, the information that Phoenix has, I don't feel like we should say that, because I feel like that's metagaming to a degree, and the game won't accept that. Even though that's my theory, we don't have evidence of that. I will say, of course he didn't. Now then, this must be when we get to hear the name of the mystery accomplice. Not this time, Von Karma. But what You're not going to sucker me into this one. What are you blabbering about, Mr. Wright? There was no accomplice. Acro planned and committed this murder all by himself. Order! Order! What the... What are you getting at? Way to keep them on their toes, Nick. Now I'm going to have to prove how it all fits together. Yeah, how am I going to do that? I have to show how Acro murdered Russell Berry. Can you do it, Nick? Can you really do that? I know what I can't do. I can't stop now. If I stop attacking, I'm doomed. All right, then let's do it. Mr. Phoenix Wright, if this witness is the killer, then his eyewitness account is all lies, right? Hmm, Mr. Wright, I'd like you to clear something up for me. When the crime was committed, exactly where was Mr. Dingling? Well, considering that my theory is that the bust is utilized in this, and maybe it was tied to a crane or, like, some machination. Oh, that's a thought. I should have looked out, like, uh, taken a look at Acro's windows. Because... Somehow, like, it has to be the bust. The bust had to have been used in some degree, so maybe the bust was used to bludgeon him over the head he, while he was looking at the box down there, slumped over the box, 
and with a coat and the built-in hat of the bust, it rises up and that's what Mo saw. But it was just the thing being drawn back into Acro's room, maybe? Because if he does have a doctor's note, then let's assume that he did indeed commit it from his room. He was obviously here the entire time. That's Acro's room? Pretty simple, eh? Acro wasn't able to leave the lodging house by himself. In that case, there can only be one correct answer. Acro didn't leave his room to kill the ringmaster. What? Are you nuts? What say you, Mr. Dingling? It's an interesting theory. Um, that's it? Considering that what you've proposed is impossible, yes, that's it. Hmm, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. As the witness has stated, your assertion is impossible. I mean, so is the assertion that Maximilian Galactica flew outside. But we're accepting that in this courtroom. As he is in a wheelchair, there's no way he could go to the scene or be the killer. We just said that he did it from his room, did we not? Hmm, you've got a point. It seems you've forgotten once again, Mr. Phoenix Wright. The defendant was clearly spotted at the scene of the crime. That's true. Mo said that he saw Max, didn't he? But Maya, it's still impossible for humans to fly. Do you mind if I ask you a question, Mr. Wright? What is it? I understand some of your logic. However, how do you think that I killed him? If I can't leave my room, I obviously couldn't wear Max's costume. How did he do it? That's the next course of this legal buffet. Be careful, Nick, if you mess up here. She's right, I can't mess up here. I've got to give this someone some serious thought. I'm sure that Acro killed the Ringmaster. I'm still not. It does feel weird that this is where we're going. Then again, he does have a lot of motive to a degree. And he did it while he was in his room, no doubt about it. Time to enlighten us as to how Mr. Dingley committed the crime. I will say present evidence because I still think that it is the bust. Because that's the only way that the silhouette could be true. They could see the hat, but it'd still not be true because it was stone and not the actual hat. Present evidence. I'm going to present some evidence. So what did Mr. Dingley use to commit the crime of murder against Russell Berry? Uh, stone. What's that? A picture? It is indeed. The problem is with the item that's shown in the picture. The bust? It's quite a large bust. And because of its life-sized, it's also very, very heavy. Heavy? Heavy enough to guarantee a certain death. Especially if it was dropped from a third-story window. Ah! Oh, he's looking serious. See? This is how Acro was able to kill the Ringmaster. With the force of gravity and Maximilian Galactica's ample bust. Order! Order! So you're saying the bust fell onto the Ringmaster? A rather simple crime. Even if you were stuck in a wheelchair, it'd be incredibly easy to commit. How could you possibly wheel a wheelchair with something so heavy? It's impossible! Well, Acro is an acrobat. He should have more than enough upper body strength to carry something like the bust. Mr. Dingling, how do you respond to these charges? Well... Acro's at a loss for words. He should be. He knows that I'm getting close to the truth. Well, 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 Acro. You can't run away- Ah! I'd watch what I say if I were you, Mr. Phoenix, right? What? Your Honor, the physical health of the witness is material to this case. I demand that we get proper testimony from the witness himself. Hmm, testimony, you say? Von Karma. She's just using this testimony as a ruse to stall for time. There's absolutely no need for such testimony. The defense has its version of the murder, as the prosecution has the right to respond. The defense's objection is overruled. Why can't he see things my way once in a while? 
Mr. Dingling, I'm sorry, but we need you to testify about your physical condition. If you have any doubts about your ability to testify, we can request expert testimony. The witness will have no problems. However, let's all be respectful towards him. Thank you. Ah, that woman will sink to any low to win a case. Hilarious that our hero is trying to, on some level, pester an injured, wheel-bound, wheelchair-bound individual. I suppose I could have lifted something the size of the bus. I have a strong upper body from working as an acrobat, and my, only my legs were injured. However, lifting the bust and looking out of the window would have been impossible. There's no way I could have exerted the kind of force of my lower body. That makes it impossible for me to have known the, ring, the location of the ringmaster's head. Thus, it would have been unrealistic for me to drop the bust on him, don't you think? Again, you did write the note with the evidence, so... If we assume that maybe he got somebody else to put the chest there, it's just like, hey, I need that for something. Or maybe even done it himself. But, but at the same time... Wait, the box is right outside his window. So if we do assume there's some kind of crane or, like, lifting, lowering mechanism attached to his window to a degree then wouldn't he be able to lower the chest, bring up back up his little pulley ro rope crane thing, and then tie the the bust to it? I would assume that. That's my thought. Hmm, I have no doubts in regard to this witness's testimony. It was impossible for him to lift the bust and stick himself out far enough to look. Not to mention that he could have not known the location of the ringmaster's head. A single false step would have led to even more severe injuries. That's what I was thinking. What is your opinion on the matter, Phoenix? I'd still like to proceed with my cross-examination. He's simply stalling. It's shameful, really. Uh, I can't let her get to me. I've got to stay focused. Hmm. Since he admits that, I don't feel like we need to do that. I have a strong approach, but no need for that. I concede that that would be impossible. There's no way I could have exerted... Sure. That makes it impossible? Hmm. I feel like I should press on that. Or that. Hmm. Because, like, what evidence do we have that would help us? In my mind, I feel like the note... Well, no. Not the note, because that's technically irrelevant to this section. But the wooden box is important because it held the seasoning salt, and this is also connected to the note. And because the box is right there, if he's, like, looking over the box, you would know exactly where it is. And again, my idea of a pulley system or something. <laughs> I will first, well, double-check, make sure I'm saved, then I will press, see if I get any hints. Why do you say it would be impossible? Allow me to explain. You accept that if I was carrying the bust, I couldn't see out below the window. Thus, there is no way that I would know the location of the ringmaster's head. Well, I suppose you've got a point. Hey, Nick, huh? What if you turn things around? Maybe you think of it sort of like this. If he knew the location of the ringmaster's head, then he could drop the bust and would have no reason to look. That does make sense. If only he could prove it somehow. That Acro knew the location of the ringmaster's head without looking down. I think I've already explained things sufficiently. Sufficiently. I feel like... Yeah, because I feel like the box would be a very important thing, because it's heavy enough that it would be kind of a burden to move by accident. So, if he heard the ringmaster messing with the box, he could drop the bus however he wanted. I'm going to say it is the box. Acro. You didn't really need to lean out the window, did you? What are you driving at, Mr. Wright? You already knew ahead of time where the ringmaster's head was going to be. Quite precisely, I may add. Objection. Your silly hinting at things is pointless, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Enough stalling. How about you show us some evidence? But, but I did such a good job hinting. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Hurry up and explain things, Mr. Wright. Maybe you should take a look at this. 
The key point here is the wooden box. The same wooden box that the victim was... The same wooden box that the victim was found hunched over. The same. The question is, who placed the wooden box there? Who? When Ben and company... Oh yeah, they didn't see him carrying the box. When Ben and company saw the ringmaster, they didn't see him holding the box. Which means that this wooden box was already placed at the scene of the crime. I have to admit that your theory makes a lot of sense. The moment that the bust came falling down was exactly the same moment that the ringmaster lifted up this wooden box. Which means that the answer to all these questions is now crystal clear. You... you mean? If the bust were to fall upon the point marked out by the wooden box, there would be no way that he could miss the head of the victim. No! Order! 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 This is unbelievable! Finally, some of these loose ends are starting to tie themselves up. Now I just gotta keep going, and there's only one way to go from here, forward. So the next question I have is, who placed the wooden box at the scene? It was Mr. Dingling, of course, except he can't get to and from his room on his own. I... that's the thing, Phoenix. He... it was supplied earlier that... Acro cannot go, like, up and down the stairs of the lodge on his own. So I'm just trying to think. Hmm. He connected it to a rope, and then all he had to do was lower it down. Well, that was my theory, so I'm gonna guess that my theory is wrong. Ow! Allow me to whip some sense into you, Mr. Phoenix Wright! Ow! 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 The ringmaster's head could have been anywhere when he lifted the box. That's why the box was made so specially made. S specially made? Indeed. It had the most peculiar future. I'm gonna... Really, not the contents, but that is important. Because, like I said earlier, it's heavy enough that it can't easily be moved. And plus, hmm, the size, but it's mainly the weight, I feel. Because you have to kind of prep yourself to lift something like that. Weight of the box. The box has a remarkable weight. Weight? According to the court record, it weighs 20 pounds. Just to lift up this wooden box would have required... Oh, I see. One would have to squat down, then lift it up with their body, wouldn't they? That's exactly what I was trying to point out. The box is also very large. The box also has carrying handles on either side, doesn't it? That is correct. To lift up the box, you'd have to squat down. Which means that no matter who you are, your head would be in approximately the same place. Fool! Are you saying that to yourself? He's just so calm. So calm. Does he even bother to listen to me anymore? I've heard what you've had to say. Yes? I must admit, I'm shocked at your imaginative skills. Did you, did you do it? Did you place this wooden box in the plaza? Mr. Wright may have a vivid imagination, but I could never have done what he's proposing. What? Mr. Wright, do you recall the original location of Max's bust? I remember it was in the... the dilly -dee. Of course I remember. It was on top of the table in the cafeteria. Could the monkey have stolen it? Could the monkey have stolen the bust? That's my theory. Hmm. Hmm. Then what happened to it? I'd like you to remember one important fact, Mr. Wright. I could not possibly leave the lodging house by myself. That's what I thought. But yeah, going forward, I'm going to assume he's going to be like, how could I have gotten the bust? Let's take a quick look and see. The bust is sparkly, so it would attract money. I'm going to say money stole it for you. Ah, that means... You understand what I mean, don't you? I may very well have been able to drop the bust from my room. However, how could I have gotten the bust from the cafeteria to my room? Money the monkey! He steals things! You see, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Explain that! Don't forget, you said there was no accomplice! Ah! Well, money wouldn't technically be an accomplice. Tell us exactly how the witness could have carried the bus from the cafeteria. Yep, we definitely have a problem here. But this is no place to get perplexed. 
I've got to get my wits about me and prove how things happened once and for all. All right, Mr. Wright, let's hear your explanation. How did the witness get the bus from the cafeteria back to his room? The monkey. A monkey? Everyone knows money. He loves shiny objects of any size. The money, the monkey did steal a goddamn tuba. So there's a possibility. Oh, like when he stole the ventriloquist's ring. So, are you saying the witness had a monkey steal the bus? Of course he didn't order the monkey to steal it. The monkey stole it on his own, and then brought it back to his room. Home? Money lives in Acro's room. Acro's room? But the bus was bronze, wasn't it? Bronze isn't all that shiny. Maybe you should put the whip down sometime and read the court record. My, those are some very nice cards he's holding. Yes, and they're made of platinum, which is very shiny. Glah! Acro. Money is a strong monkey, right? It'd be easy for him to bring the bust back to your room. If he wasn't able to handle that himself, I'd be on the market for a new roommate. <laughs> he actually made it kind of a joke. That's funny. Order! Order! I said order, Miss Von Karma! Where is the bust in question at this moment? Um, 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 I, um, I don't know. We're searching for it as we speak. Hmm, this is a rather strange turn of events. But let's say that the monkey had not stolen the bust. What would have happened then? Well, in that event, something else would have been used as the murder weapon. Hmm, wait. Do you mean this bust was the murder weapon purely by accident? It's possible. Maybe Acro saw Money's mo mountain of stolen goods and thought to use one of them. Many ways, I think we've more than proven one critical fact. Namely, that it was entirely possible that Acro was the murderer. That presents an interesting, like, read of the situation. That... Maximilian Galactica being framed is purely by accident. Moron! <laughs> what are you, a yandere? Mr. Wright's argument was so circular, I'm still a bit dizzy. However, his argument does hold water. There's no denying that. Oh! Don't seem so flamboozled, especially by this fraud of an attorney. Fraud? You've forgotten the absolute most important thing, Mr. Phoenix, right? And what is that? You should know! You forgot that your fraud and magical client was spotted at the scene of the crime! It's a bust of him! There is no reason to doubt the clown's testimony. That's true! How do you respond to that, Mr. Wright? I'm gonna say the, uh, the, the bust again! Nick, don't let her beat you down! I won't! This is my chance to turn this trial around! I shall save again as we get up there. When the murder occurred, there were two people at the scene of the crime. One was the victim, Russell Berry, and the other was the murderer himself. And to this and only this, Mr. Phoenix Wright, who was the murderer the clown saw? The bust. He saw Max's bu- Ow! I asked who was the other person Mo saw in the scene. That evidence has nothing to do with the question. Au contraire, mon frère. It does indeed have something to do with the question. Mo said that he saw Max's silhouette. But he did not actually see the man himself. It wasn't a human being he saw. <laughs> How is that possible? It's simple, really. What Mo actually saw that night was Max's bust. What are you talking about? Have you tried using your brain at all in this case? The silhouette he saw was wearing a cloak! There's no reason why you couldn't attach a cloak to the bust. It would be easy to hang one off the cards in the bust's hands. Idiot, who in their right mind would put a cloak on a bust? It doesn't matter who put it on the bust. Just wait a minute now, Mr. Wright. Who put the cloak on the bust? Because that is an important thing. If the, like, the ringmaster was wearing the cloak, did it just accidentally... Yeah, because, yeah, the cloak is a one-of-a-kind, too, at least, supposedly, I assume. It's one of the symbols. 
I'm going to assume that, for whatever reason, the cloak went from Russell Berry onto the bust. That is my theory. Who put the cloak on the bust? That question is of the utmost importance to this case. Don't you agree? Don't oh, caught me. So let's have it, Mr. Wright. Who put the cloak on the bust? I'm going to say Russell Berry himself by accident. Fool? Him? You're saying it was the victim himself? Russell Berry? That's what I'm saying. Gee, I mean, the victim himself placed the cloak on the bust? Place the cloak isn't really the right way of putting it. Then what would be the right way of putting it, Mr. Wright? Explain yourself! Nick, do you really have a handle on all of this? I'm fine, Maya. I'm usually putting all the pieces together. There's really only one pi uh, picture I can paint anyways. All right. So you want to know what really happened that night? Let's step back in time. Acro used a rope to lower the wooden box onto the scene. Then he attached that rope to the bust and dangled the bust out of the out of his bedroom window directly above the wooden box. At the same time, the ringmaster told Max to wait in his room and went to the scene. Of course, at the time, the ringmaster was wearing Max's costume. Perhaps he didn't want anyone to recognize him that night. But just as he feared, he was spotted at the entrance of the lodging house by none other than the ventriloquist and his puppet, Ben and Trilo. When the ringmaster arrived on the scene, he bent over to lift the wooden box. And that's when Acro took his chance and released the rope. And it fucking hit him with such force that it just scooped the cloak off him. That's so brutal. Now this is when the magic happens. At the very instant the bust hit the victim. Oh, we actually fucking see it. Got hooked. I think that's... You wait just a second there, Mr. Phoenix, right? As much as you try, as much as you scheme, this isn't true! It can't be! It's still a little early to be getting so upset, Miss Von Karma. The circus isn't over yet. What? The impact of the bust on the victim threw the cloak up, which snagged onto the bust. That impact also caused a certain s uh, caused the sound a certain witness heard, prompting him to take a look. That witness was, of course, Lawrence Mo Curls, the clown. When Mo looked out his window, the cloak had already snagged onto the bust. Now, having completed the crime, Acro naturally went about pulling up the murder weapon. Of course, he had no idea that Mo saw the bust being raised with the cloak dangling on it. Primarily because in his wheelchair, he couldn't see out his window. So he just kept pulling the bust up, which made it look like it flew away. And that is how the magical murderer disappearing into the sky came to be. <laughs> I love that it did the same noise again and again. So you see, the only person who could have pulled this off is the one person who was able to drop the murder weapon from above the crime scene. Acro! It could only have been you! And yet he's just so calm. Acro's been playing mind games with all of us. He sure has. But he has come to the end of his rope now. So? What now? You've graced us with a rather long-winded tale. But do you have any evidence to prove your fairy tale is true? He wrote a note! He confessed it to me! The note! The evidence? I mean... Look at it this way. This lady has literally no evidence that Max was there. All they have is, oh, Max was seen at the crime, when we clearly have proven that there is at least, like, even if both these people are innocent, Mo and Acro, it still proves that the bust could have been there wearing the cloak. And 
Again, which is more believable? A grown man leaving no footprints or murder weapon flying off into the ether, but at the same time leaving his hat on the ground while having his hat while in the air? It makes no sense. Why is it that I come in here and they're like, oh yeah, your guy, he was seen doing it. He was seen flying away. Even though it was only his silhouette and nobody actually saw his face. And we've laid out a clear thing that proves a more logical situation that isn't just lull magic. Yeah. In this court, only two things matter. The power of evidence and the power of my whip. Don't forget the power of my gavel as well. Mr. Wright, the prosecution brings up a very good point. Can we see some evidence? Nick, they say they want evidence. Again, I'm going to say it has to be the note, right? It has to be the note. Because he admitted to writing it. And we have eyewitness testimony that the dude went to diddly D. Hmm. Or, because uh, my opinion is the note, because that ties him to the, like, the location to a degree. But we'll wait and see, because... Other things still matter, like the silk hat, because the silk hat was found at the crime scene, but it was also seen flying away, which is incongruous with the testimonies. And both of them said, oh, but the hat, but the hat is on the bus. So I do not know. I don't know. Well, let's see what they ask for. They say they want evidence. I just explained how there can be only one possible murder method. But there is still something unusual about Moe's eyewitness account. Aha! Something un unusual about Moe's eyewitness account, I'm going to say the hat then. I think that's them trying to lead you away from the note. Unusual? A contradiction, actually. Thank you, game, for being well made. Okay, then, use that and just find out and get us out of this jam. That's enough talking amongst yourselves. Proceed, Mr. Wright. Present some evidence to the court that backs your claims. I want hard proof that you have unraveled the trick to this magic case. Again. There's only one of it. It was found at the crime scene. But both of them said, oh, well, it flew up into the sky with the man because the bust has a built-in hat. The problem is Max's three symbols. You know, the silk hat, the cloak, and the white roses. Those symbols were a problem numerous times during yesterday's proceedings. Yesterday, there were two contradictions in Moe's testimony. The silk hat was one, the white roses were the other. But the theory I just presented explains all of these contradictions. You fool, do you ever shut up? Max's silk hat was found at the scene of the crime. However, remember that Mo said yesterday he testified that the criminal he saw fleeing the scene was wearing a silk hat. There's only one explanation for that. The silk hat that Mo saw was actually the busts. Makes sense. If you look at it that way, then he did see the silk hat. Well, sort of. Fine, you've got one, but what about the other contradiction? The other contradiction? Remember what the ventriloquist said in court? He said that he witnessed white roses on Max's chest that night. Well, if we go from how the animation played out, the white roses would be facing Mo and then, uh, like, shrouded in darkness. Wait, no, they... Yeah, they would. Uh, like... Or they would be folded in, either way. But the clown's testimony doesn't match. The clown said that there were no white roses. I'd like to see you try and explain that, Wayne. Can you do it, Nick? Of course, I can explain all of it. I wonder how what it will, what it will want me to present. What was that? Please recall the instant when the cloak snagged on the bust. If the cloak snagged onto the bust, what happened to the white roses? They got folded in or were present behind? Yeah, they got folded in. Do you get it yet? If the cloak got snagged onto the front of the bust, it means that the white roses would end up on the back of the bust. Ah! Which explains why Mo didn't see them. The white roses were not visible because they were on the back side of the bust. Well, front side, but back to him. Order! Order! Are we gonna get another investigation day?
This is quite the shocking state of affairs. Mr. Wright's theory still sounds a bit absurd to me. However, let's just keep going down this road for a while and see where it leads. Let's do this, Nick. Then maybe Von Karma will finally throw in the towel. Or throw in the handkerchief. He's still so calm. Well, so much of that theory. Mr. Wright, do you mind? What is it? You took the time to research our circus, didn't you? Well, yes, I did. Is there something making you think that I didn't? If you did, then maybe you'll understand why I think you're off track. Um, why is that? Motive. Why does Mag Max doesn't have a motive? Either. You could say, oh, well, he wanted money. But he was already getting paid tons. He was like, oh, Acro doesn't have a motive. No, that is Max, you fool. This witness feels an incredible debt of gratitude towards the ringmaster. Anyone with any relation to the circus is well aware. Thus, there's absolutely no way someone like this would kill the ringmaster. Except we technically do have motive because his brother got bit in the head by the lion. And we can presume that somebody sabotaged that to some degree. Higgledy piggledy wah wah wah. Hmm. Your Honor, I'd like you to hear Acro's story. Learn about his relationship with the Ringmaster and his life up until now. What do we do? There's no doubting that Acro deeply respected the Ringmaster. Acro's motive. Hmm. It seems that this case isn't over yet. Very well. However, I feel this is a good place to take a break. I will listen to the rest of Mr. Dingling's testimony after recess. This court will now take a ten-minute recess. Because next I think we'll need to present, like, the note and the pepper. Because those are important. The pepper caused the lion to sneeze, which is why he put it in there. But mm, I wonder why. I guess symbolic? If the ringmaster somehow got away? <laughs> I can't believe it! Acro! It's pretty shocking, isn't it? It definitely is! And to think he was always the most straightforward of the group! Jeepers! Am I that hated? <clears throat> Acro tried to pin the murder on you on purpose. He... he did? Psst, psst. <laughs> but I'm nothing but a little old nobody, you know? But you're not, which is kind of the reason why. <coughs> hey! Hey, pal! <laughs> totally the wrong voice. You're gonna ignore me after I went to all this trouble to bring you some evidence? Ah, uh, Detective Gumshoe. Ah, uh, forget it. I'm going home. This guy deserves to be... <laughs> this guy deserves to be guilty anyways. Now, now, Detective, I'm sorry. Look, why don't you relax a little? We've got some really nasty... We've got some really nasty milk. How about a card... How about a card trick, Detective? <laughs> well, if you insist. Now, about that evidence you mentioned. What is it? Here you go. Huh? This was yesterday in Acro's room. Yep, and I've included the forensic results. Take a look at it later. Won't Miss Von Karma be mad that you're doing this? That's why this is all a secret. <laughs> huh? Look, details are on a need-to-know basis, and we're not really allies or anything. But everything that's happened in court up until now has gone according to our plan. I don't know. Miss Von Karma doesn't seem in control of things in here in there just now. You'll figure it out eventually, pal. Yesterday, our final plans were set in motion. Final plans? Uh-huh. That reminds me, I've got a message from the prosecutor for you. Nothing is ever truly decided until the very end. That's it. And that's it for me too, pal. I'm out of here. Could it be that the prosecutor that he is referring to is actually Mr. Edgeworth? Could it be? <laughs> oh, that's just wishful thinking. But I don't know what Von Karma's playing at. What did he mean by that? The very end part. It was all pretty cryptic to me. Oh, one more thing. Ah! Don't scare me like that. It looks like there's a large care package from the circus for the defendant. What? For me? It's milk. The reception area looks like some kind of dairy. So hurry up and drink it all before it spoils. An entire dairy's worth of milk for me? Well, he did live on a farm, apparently, so I guess that makes sense.
court is now back in session. Miss Von Karma, please continue from where you left off. I'd like to continue with Akro's testimony, starting with his relationship to the victim. I'd also like to get proof from the defense. Proof of what kind of motive Akro would have to commit this crime. Understood. Now, Mr. Dingling. Yes, Your Honor. Please proceed with your testimony. Finally, we get to the motive. Wait, Nick, are you okay? Just do me a favor and don't ask questions you don't want the answer to. I'm gonna have to take a look at the, the handkerchief and see what the forensic results are. Bat scarf, stained with his blood and a small quantity of pepper. Exactly. When we were little, we were abandoned by our parents. That's when the ringmaster of the Berry Big Circus, Russell Berry, took us in. I became an acrobat at around nine years old. I wanted to find a way to repay the ringmaster. That was my sole purpose in life. I feel like I have nothing to do there. Hmm, you're such a thoughtful young man. As you heard, the witness deeply respected the victim. I wonder how anyone could think Acro could kill the man he held, such in, held in such high esteem. You are absolutely right. How could anyone think that, Mr. Wright? Which is why there's no real need for a cross-examination, is there? Actually, that's the question I'm trying to answer myself. Why would Acro kill the ringmaster? We know that. This might be my last chance to answer the question. But all he said was, our parents died, he took us in, Hmm. Hmm. Because this, this could be a moment where the game's trying to psych me out. Then again, I can always just save and press on everything, can't I? Uh, of course I'll cross-examine and see. The defense has a right to cross-examine the witness. Hmm, you're so tactless, Mr. Phoenix Wright. You don't care about justice, do you? You just want to fabricate a motive. Very well, Mr. Wright. Cross-examine the witness. Maybe we can be like, ah, who is the us in this situation? When we were little. Let's just see. We? Yes, my brother Sean and I. What? You have a brother? How old were you when this happened, Acro? I was eight years old and my brother was four. Hmm, your parents were very cruel, weren't they? Nowadays, we aren't bitter about what happened to us, because it allowed us to meet the wonderful people at the Big Berry Circus. Nick, the judge is getting misty-eyed. He's got a soft spot for sob stories, it looks like. Oh! <laughs> no crying in court. Let's keep going. <laughs> the witness may proceed with his testimony. That's when the ringmaster took us in. Maybe we can get some extra information on, like, how that came to be. How would you describe your relationship with the ringmaster? He was like an uncle, a father and a big brother all rolled up into one. The ringmaster and my brother were the only family I had. Hmm, what about the other people at the circus? This was over 15 years ago. Back then, there were very few customers coming in, so no one really had the time to look after us. They were worried about other things. But the ringmaster, he always he would always come to see us with a laugh and a smile. What a beautiful story. That's why I was always thinking of what I would could do to help. I wanted to thank him. Nick, isn't Acro such a wonderful person? I know. He seems like a nice guy. Which is what makes this so difficult. Hmm, so then how long have you been a performer? I became an acrobat at around nine years old. You'd think I could present the thing that he basically admitted to writing, but... I feel like the scarf, the note, and the small seasoning bottle will come into play in this one. I wanted to find a way to repay the... Well, the well, let's go ahead and press this. Why acrobat specifically? You started off as an acrobat at that early of an age? I begged the ringmaster until he finally agreed to let me do it. Ever since then, I've been in incredible physical shape. That's also when I decided to form a group of my brother. We called ourselves the Fi uh, Flying Dingling Berries. Hmm. Dingleberry? I feel like that's what they're going there. It's nearly a household name. I've even heard of them in Germany. Liar! 
The point is that I wanted to be of some use to the circus. Hmm, you are truly a remarkable young man. The judge keeps looking at Akro almost like a proud father. Hmm. <laughs> I wanted to find a way to repay the ringmaster. Did you ever have any trouble with the ringmaster? Ow! How could you ask such a thing, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Do you have some sort of fundamental misunderstanding of this witness's testimony? All the heartfelt emotions contained within? You better think about this, Mr. Phoenix Wright. You better think hard. Ow! Ow! Hmm. No matter how you look at it, there's no way I could see the witness ever taking the victim's life. Who did you get there? And curtsy. Exactly. I've been waiting for you to say that, Your Honor. Nick, I hate to say it, but I agree with them. I was trying to chase down the truth, but I ended up just looking like a jerk. I think that will be enough for now. Pondering whether or not this man would kill the ringmaster leads me to believe that... It is pretty unlikely. Exactly right, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, I'd like to ask you a question. Go ahead, Your Honor. What I would just like to know... Oh, I see the... The penalty box coming up in the corner. Can you provide an explanation as to why Acro would want him dead? His brother, right? I feel like that's an important thing. Hmm. But at the same time, I don't see why he would go after the ringmaster. In fact, that could be a big thing about it. He said that he... We've basically proven that if Acro did drop the bust and is the one who did all this, he wouldn't be... He wouldn't have looked. He wouldn't know who was opening the chest. And he did also, again, the note... He put it in Regina's pocket. It was just that she was such a dumbass... That she thought, oh, well, but I'm not a murderer. I'm going to say I can't provide one. Because I don't think that Acro would blame the ringmaster for Leon's... Uh, yeah, I don't think that Acro would blame the ringmaster for Leon sneezing and basically murking his brother. Nick? Yeah, I didn't even have to think about it. It was obvious from the start. Your Honor, the reason that Acro killed the Ringmaster is something that can't be proven. What? That's because Acro had no reason to kill the Ringmaster at all. Ow! Your foolish attempts to fool us like foolish fools is so foolheartedly foolish. Did you forget you made an accusation against this witness, did you not? I believe it was, this is the real killer of Russell Berry Ringmaster. If you want to jump to the end of things, then yes, that sounds about right. The end of things? Acro, you didn't plan to kill the Ringmaster at all, did you? The Ringmaster wasn't your target that night. What did you just say? I'm saying that the target of this witness's murderous plot was not the Ringmaster. Because it was never his intention to kill Russell Berry to begin with. But I'm trying to think who would. It would have to be the one who, like, put... Like, there is pepper in the scarf, so... Maybe... I'm just trying to think. Maybe somebody put Pepper in the scarf intentionally? But the real question is why? Why would they want to kill that? Order! Order! Bail if I don't care who it is, smack anyone who's loud in the face! Twice if you must! Mr. Wright, what in the world are you trying to do to my court? Ow! Mr. Phoenix Wright, what in the world are you trying to do to his court? Are you attempting to imply that Acro was trying to kill someone else? He put it in Regina's pocket. That's the thing. Okay, let's replay events. The event that started this all was Bat making a dare-slash-bet with Regina. 
he said that if he could pull off the trick of putting his head in Leon's mouth, she would have to go on a date with him to the movies. Then presumably the pepper in his scarf caused Leon to sneeze and put him in the hospital in a coma. And didn't somebody say like that Regina and Bat would like prank each other? And Regina doesn't think that people die. Regina thinks people become stars. And maybe that's why Mo wanted Regina to see this. Because Regina was the one that's fabricated the situation that got Bat almost killed, put into a coma. And Acro, more than anything, maybe Acro was trying to kill Regina because he felt that Regina was a threat to the circus at that point. But Regina was such a dumbass that when she read the note that he slipped in her pocket, and he has, he is very cold towards Regina. He was trying to kill Regina. Regina Barry? This young girl is the ringmaster's daughter, correct? Acro, you were really aiming for her that night, weren't you? Objection. You don't need to answer that. It's a mean-spirited leading question. He could easily answer this question. If I'm wrong, all he has to say is you're wrong. That's it. That's it, huh, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Enough, Mr. Wright. Allow me to... Ow! The only thing allowed to interrupt me is death itself. Huh? And that goes for you too, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Show me evidence now! I want to know why Acro would want to kill Regina Barry. Is this where the note comes in? Because the only evidence that we have is the scarf, the note, and the pepper. I'm going to assume that we want to put out the... the note because that ties things together, right? 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 Yes, me too. I demand to see some proof. Present evidence that proves Echo was out to kill this young girl. He put it in her pocket. Acro, you remember this, don't you? That's... It's a piece of paper that we found inside the ringmaster's tailcoat. Inside the victim's tailcoat? Acro wrote this note. It's ironically entitled, To the Murderer. Its purpose was to call someone to the plaza at 10 p.m. So you're saying that he called Russell Berry with that note? Yes, but there's just one little problem. Problem? Acro did indeed place this note into someone's pocket. However, that someone was not the ringmaster. You mean it wasn't for the... That's exactly what I mean. The person this note was intended for was none other than Regina Berry. Order! 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 But Mr. Wright, this little theory of yours! It's the truth, Your Honor. It isn't a theory. Simply put, Regina didn't think the note was meant for her. Which is why, the morning of the crime, she placed it on the cafeteria bulletin board. That's when her father, me, I mean the ringmaster, saw the note? That's correct. The ringmaster ended up in that plaza instead of Regina. And he was killed because of that mistake. Instead of Regina. That's... that's... that's incredible! Remember the testimony that Acro gave us earlier today! Lifting the bust and looking out the window would have been impossible. There's no way I could have exerted that kind of force on my lower body. If I were to do that, I'd end up falling out the window myself. Acro had no idea who it was that arrived in the plaza, because he couldn't look down out of his window to see who it actually was. I've got it, I've got it! Acro thought it was Regina down in the plaza! And that's when he let the bust fly, and also would explain why the box is 20 pounds, because Regina is, well, smaller than most people. She's still kind of a middling teenager, so a 20-pound hefty box would still be enough to really be cumbersome. 
Hey, Nick, isn't Regina listening to all this from the audience? She is. Unfortunately, it's only going to get harsher from here. I hope Regina can handle it. Acro wrote this note to Regina. Foolishly foolish fool with foolishly foolish fool ideas of foolish tomfoolery. You're so foolish you've even made me sound like a foolhardy fool. Very well, Mr. Phoenix Wright, if you're so sure, then tell us about this line. I have conclusive evidence of what took place. Yes? What about that line? Well, if that note was meant for Regina Barry, it would mean that this note is declaring that Regina Barry is a murderer. You just don't get it, do you? What? What did you just say? The ringmaster knew what that note meant, which is why he went to the plaza in place of his lovely daughter. Hold it right there, Mr. Wright. What is this incident that is alluded to in the note? The incident six months ago. Why would they, why would they give me this as an option? This makes me feel like it's rice from the ashes all over again because I looked it up and well, then again, I think also somebody in the chat also said that little fact that if I presented evidence incorrectly, it would have gotten uh, my assistant arrested. Hmm. I'm just trying to think. Hmm. I'm gonna say I know all about it because I see no reason why I wouldn't. And an incident occurred six months ago. And now I'm more than ready to show this court what happened at that time. Moron! Wait, are you sure that it relates to the present case? It does indeed, Your Honor. Everything in this case is has its start in what happened six months ago. Really, Nick? I, um, I think so. Well, then, if that's the case, hurry up and tell us about it. What is this conclusive evidence mentioned in the note? The pepper. I know I'd certainly like to know what it is. If I can't answer that question, the judge is going to think I'm bluffing. The conclusive evidence... It, it went to the judge, so I thought he was asking. The conclusive evidence about the incident six months ago is the small seasoning bottle. Hmm. What kind of spicy joke is this, Mr. Phoenix Wright? It isn't a joke at all. It's the decisive evidence you asked for. What do you mean? Recall that the victim was trying to take the wooden box away with him. He was doing it so... Um, so because this piece of... He was doing, ah, he was doing so. Gotcha. He was doing so because this piece of decisive evidence was what was inside. Another unbelievable conclusion. Very well, Mr. Wright. So what exactly are you saying? Are you claiming Regina Berry killed someone with a small bottle of pepper? Taking the note into account, that's the only logical conclusion you can draw. Foolish fool who never tires of his own foolish ways. If you're so sure, Mr. Phoenix, right then... Answer this question. Who is Regina Berry's intended victim? Bat. Who is this? That is Acro's younger brother. What does this prove his younger brother isn't dead? Technically, that's true. However, Bat has been in a coma for six months now. It's not a stretch to see how Acro could feel that his brother is dead. Regina, she did that to him. Do you spend your entire life dreaming up new ways to be fooled? Naturally, the prosecution has looked into Acro's brother, Sean Dingling. Six months ago, he was bit by a lion and fell into his current comatose state. A, a lion? Regina, I, I mean Miss Regina Berry, is an animal tamer by trade. However, no tamed animal in that position is ever trained to attack another human. That wouldn't un They wouldn't understand the command. Moreover, Miss Regina could never do something like that. It's not just... She's a moron. She thinks people die. They don't die. They become stars. Hmm. So then what happened to Akro's brother? He's not the victim of an attempted murder. He's the victim of an accident. I see. Now what do we do? No one seems to be going along with your theory. Do you think what happened to Bat was actually an accident? Hmm. I do think it was more than that, maybe. Or would it be an accident? But at the same time, there is pepper in the scarf. I'm going to say it's more than that. Like, even if it was... It can't just be an accident. It was an accident caused by Regina. 
The lion fighting bat was no accident at all. What? You're such an amateur, Mr. Phoenix Wright. There is no way that Regina would ever incite her lion to attack another human being. She may not have incited the lion to attack another human being. But Regina is responsible for making the lion fight Acro's brother, Bat. That's... that's just a scarf. Acro. This scarf is something that Bat used to wear, correct? That's right. And who is the one that gave this scarf to Bat? R Regina. Regina gave it to him. Regina. There is something more than just blood on this scarf, Your Honor. And what might that be? Pepper. Pepper? Pepper. Regina gave the scarf to Bat right before the accident, and she covered it with pe as much pepper as she could. Hey, what's with the silent treatment? Um, excuse me, Mr. Wright. You've done a good job of fingering a criminal, but out of curiosity, what was her crime? Um, Miss Berry gave a pepper-covered scarf to Bat as a present. Where's the crime in that? It still seems like the judge just doesn't get it. Mr. Phoenix Wright, wasn't it said that the lion seemed to be smiling? Smiling? The lion was smiling. Right before Bat was bit by the lion, for a moment, the lion's mouth changed and it looked like he was smiling. Lions smile? I've never heard of them smiling. However... Lions sneeze. <laughs> Leon wasn't trying to bite bad at all. I called it. In reality, all he actually did was sneeze. I called that from the start. I just didn't realize that Acro, like, was the super duper singular man. He sneezed because of all that pepper on the scarf. What? You fool! You've got to be kidding me! What's the matter, Miss Von Karma? I... I... I object for objection's sake. <laughs> uh... Definitely feel some of that Miles Edgeworth in there. Mr. Phoenix Wright, you... This theory, you believe it? You really intend to say that this is how this joke of an accident actually happened? Of course I do. It's the truth. The lion sneezed due to the pepper, and that's when Bat lost consciousness. Acro... Arco, Acro... I had it right the first time, but then my brain's like, Ah, no, do it the other way. Acro nearly lost his brother due to this accident. Or this joke, as you put it. Which is why he tried to get his revenge against Regina. You foolish idiot! <laughs> it almost does seem like a terrible joke, doesn't it? Once again, I'm impressed by your imagination, Mr. Wright. To think that there's someone who treats this accident with the respect it deserves. Are you telling me that what I said was true? Arcro, you don't mean... You can't mean... Witness! Are you confirming the defense's claim? Mr. Wright... Unfortunately, your imagination is not enough to find me guilty of murder. What do you mean by that? The pepper, the scar, the lion. I see where you're going, but it's a bit hard to swallow. Not to mention the fact that there's an even bigger problem with your theory. What would that problem be? The same problem it's always been. Evidence. If I drop Max's bust on the top of the ringmaster... Where is the evidence that proves that claim? Ah! Uh, you mean the conclusive evidence? The biggest problem is the murder weapon, or the lack thereof, to be precise. The murder weapon? The bust that the defense claims was used. If that were to be found in Acro's, ro Acro's room, and if it was covered with the victim's blood, it would be awfully conclusive in my eyes. Yes, it would be. Or would it? The bust. Hmm. Nick, you've got to do something. This is the last step. If I get this one right, then the case is won. Hmm. I don't feel like searching his room would work because I... 
he was missing. The day of the, like, the day after the murder, or, like, the day that we went to investigate, he wasn't there. He got rid of it somehow. So I don't think that it's... I'm just trying to think. I don't... Most of all, it's definitely not in his room. So the only correct answer is to see how things work out first. It might be worthwhile to search Akro's, Akro's room, but... But why aren't you going to search his room? It looks like you finally figured things out, didn't you? Now you know the true meaning of Von Karma, Total Justice. My guess. I figured with you that's the least I should expect. You'd leave no stone unturned. A Von Karma never leaves anything to chance. We already searched Akro's room yesterday. What did you find? There's no reason to even say it. If we found what you think we found in that room, Akro would not be here as a witness. But to put a point on it, Max's bust was not in that room. That's also true. The murder weapon is still unaccounted for. You see, Mr. Wright, the bust wasn't in my room. Furthermore, Detective Dick Gumshoe executed the search by complete surprise, and we took Akro directly to the prosecutor's office after that. Hmm. End of story. Just wait a second. Something's funny about all this. <laughs> It looks like you lack the final nail to put into my coffin. But, but, what about the scarf? What about the note? What about them, Mr. Wright? No offense, but the only, only evidence there that is relative is that which pertains to the death of the ringmaster. You should know that by now. But the note was relevant because... Regina and Max could say that the ringmaster saw the note, took it off, and would have a reason to be there at that time. Hmm. Hmm. Well, let's see what the game asks of me, and then I'll debate. Do something, Nick. Don't let this case slip away. The bust, where is it now? Hmm. Where's the bust right now? You're Phoenix Wright. You know where the bust is. I'm sure you do. I don't. There's not even a single clue. How am I supposed to know where the bust is? It seems this case is coming to a close. The defense's counter-arguments look to have fallen short. Thank you for your support. Ah! I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Wright. I think that brings an end to the cross-examination of this witness. Hmm. Hold it! Or who held it? Who held it? Who held it? Where is Max's bust? The defense needs time to prepare to present its lace. I mean, case. Sorry, I'm a bit nervous and I've just bit my tongue. Huh? What? We need time to do what? Ow! Why are you the most surprised person here? She's your aide, isn't she? Do you really have a case to present, Mr. Wright? Well, are you asking me? The rest is up to you, Nick. Good luck. Hey, wait, you can't be serious. Acrobats always have their lives on the lines, don't they? That's how Akro's li uh, lived out his life up until now. So he would do something really daring. Now it's time for us to walk across our own tightrope. If we don't, we're certain to lose. Very well, the defense may proceed. He doesn't have a clue, and I don't think he'll be finding one anytime soon. Walking the tightrope of logic, there's no room for false step. Sink or swim, the only way through is forward. The murder weapon, where is Max's bust now? Well, it can't be the lodging house because they would have searched it. It can't be the big top because they would have searched it. But that one makes no... Or would it? Is it possible that Acro like, maybe broke down the bust and has been carrying it with him so that it wouldn't be, like, found anywhere? Hmm. Because, again, it literally can't be the lodging house or the big top. It has to be this one because they would have searched the lodging house. They would have searched the big top and either Phoenix or Gumshoe slash Frenzy Von Karma would have found it. Hmm. That's just very weird. I'm just trying to think. 
But, well, we again, it has to be somewhere in this courtroom. It's obvious. The bust is inside this very courtroom. It, it's obviously where? Allow me to pinpoint the location of the bust. Can't be the judge's bench, can't be the prosecutor's bench. Again, the only one that makes sense is the witness stand because that's where he is. Because again, maybe he broke it down with that dumbbell that he has in his room or something. Then again, it's made of bronze, but who cares? It's just like, it's the only thing that makes sense. Can't be prosecutor's bench, can't be judge's bench. It has to be with him, right? Acro. I'm sorry to ask this, but do you mind if I take the blanket off your... There's a blanket on his wheelchair? If I knew that, I wouldn't be so crazy. I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear you, Mr. Wright. Well, you are a big guy, and you have a pretty big wheelchair because of it. He's been carrying it with him. I just wanted to make sure you weren't hiding anything under that blanket. Because it seems to me that'd be really easy to say, hide a bust under there. <laughs> Once again, your penchant for humor hits me where it hurts, Mr. Wright. I think it's pretty amazing that you can laugh in your position. However, your lightheartedness doesn't change the fact that the bust is under there. We all know that you can't leave the lodging house by yourself in your condition. That proved inconvenient when Miss Von Karma happened to search your room yesterday. If she had found the murder weapon in your room, it would have been all over. Which is why you had to hide it in the only place that you could hide it. Under your wheelchair. Which is why, Acro, I have to ask you again. Would you please remove the blanket from your lap? Well done, Mr. Wright. Masterfully played. He is the most calm guy we've had as a, like, a, a dude, he didn't even have a breakdown. You! You fool! How could you? You've got me. I've been bagged by a real pro. Actually, two of them. Two of them? Miss Franzika Von Karma and Mr. Phoenix Wright. What? There's just one thing I'd like to know. How did you know to launch the surprise search on my room last night? There were two pieces of decisive evidence. The cloak and the bust. I burned the cloak in my room and threw the ashes away with the trash. Regina always took my trash out every morning, you know. But the bust. Obviously, I couldn't throw that away. When you executed your search, all I could do was try and hide the bust. Again. I, is the prosecutor actually Miles Edgeworth? And he's the one that sent that surprise search. And he's the one that sent Gumshoe to give me the scarf. Because I highly doubt that Franzika would send the scarf my way. And the only place that I could hide it quickly was under my wheelchair. Miss Von Karma, you had things all figured out, didn't you? I was completely sucked in by your calculated strategy. And now to be caught in the middle of court hiding the murder weapon. There's no way I can escape that. So you've got me. Well done, Mr. Wright. Well done, Miss Von Karma. Hmm, it all makes sense now. I can't believe that Von Karma thought that far ahead. It's amazing. Uh-huh. You definitely couldn't tell by looking at her. I know I sure couldn't. Again, that's why I think that it's actually Edgeworth that did it. I can't believe it. Me! Made it make a mistake? Why did I order a surprise search of your room? If only I hadn't done that. It seems we finally arrived at... Oh, she did send the search. <clears throat> that just clicked with me. So, I wonder why she's lamenting that she sent the surprise search. Maybe she was wishing that maybe... But how else could you have done it? <laughs> How else could you have done it? It seems we've finally arrived at the truth. Acro. Yes, Your Honor. Did you kill the ringmaster of the Berry Big Circus, Mr. Russell Berry? Yes, Your Honor. I'm responsible for that crime. Acro. 
all my brother wanted was for, G for Regina to like him. That's why he'd tease her. One day, my brother sprinkled some pepper on Regina. She started sneezing so hard, you couldn't help yourself from laughing. That's why Regina thought it'd be funny to get him back in the same way. And that's why she covered the scarf of pepper. I know she didn't mean for anything bad to happen. I know this. She just wanted to make my brother sneeze a few times, too. But I just couldn't forgive her, no matter what. What am I truly guilty of? I'm guilty of never, ever being able to understand her. Your brother became a star, Regina believes it so purely, that she would laugh innocently when saying it too innocently. I just couldn't stand it, no matter how hard I tried. That's when you decided to do something about Regina. How dreadful. So are you saying that you are a victim in all this as well? No, that's not what I mean. <laughs> oh, I'm nothing but a murderer. That's who I am. At first, I thought I'd kill myself. Then I pondered giving myself up. But I couldn't just up and leave. I just couldn't. Not yet. That's why I tried to pin this on Max. Max, I'm so sorry. That is the most depressing breakdown. I just, I just, I just couldn't up and leave yet. That's the most depressing breakdown. This has been such a strange case. It's almost a reflection of the circus itself. I'm an idiot. I can't believe it. You beat me. Again. I believe this case is now beyond any point of possible discussion. Thus, I'd like to declare my final verdict. Not guilty. This court is adjourned. December 30th, 427. Fabulous! But to be honest, I can't really be too happy about this. Macro, the ringmaster, Regina, and Bat. Not a single one of them was a bad person inside, huh? That's a good question. And one I don't know the answer to. Many congrats! But only at max, a million of them! But thank you. What's up the vibe in this room? We're just thinking about Acro. No, 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 no. If you worry about people too much, then you'll be like this forever and never be happy. Huh? <laughs> She's been like this for a while now. <laughs> it's all my fault. This is a sweetie, sweetie pie. Bad and Acro, they're never coming back. The first time that she realizes the severity of what happened. Now everyone's gonna split up. Regina, Mr. Wright, tell me something. What do you want to know, Regina? This is the prerequisite, like the requisite. Bibbity bop. The question will be, what is she going to ask as like the true final proof of the case? I wonder. Acro said something right at the end. I just couldn't up and leave yet. Does that mean that Acro... Is he gonna try and get his revenge on me? I don't think so. Hmm. Hmm. He couldn't up and leave yet. I, that is because that, I do wonder what that means in the context for him, but I don't think he will. Because, though it is kind of weird that he waited six months to do it, but he just, but I don't think, then again, I saved, so I don't think so. He's not going to do that to you, Regina. 
Are you sure? Are you really sure? I, I can believe that? Yep. Acro doesn't have any desire for revenge anymore. That's true, but I want to see some evidence. Huh? I want to know you're not just gonna you're just making stuff up that Arco not wanting revenge. What would it be? I don't think it would be anything in here, I don't think. I couldn't uh, I'm still trying to understand the flashback. I couldn't up and leave yet. Cuz he did think about killing himself and turning himself in, but he couldn't up and leave yet. Hmm. Let's go this piece by piece. No, 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 no. We need something relevant to either bat or acro. No, 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 no. I don't think so. No. I don't think so. That would be more like motive for murder. Profiles? Hmm. The only thing I can think of is... Because he cared about his brother so much that maybe this is what the game wants me to give because I don't see any evidence that would make sense. Because the only thing, like, relevant to... Our Acro and his brother is the scarf evidence-wise, which means the only remaining thing would be profiles, and the only profile I can think of that would be, like, good for Acro would be Bat. So, uh, well, I saved. Jibbity dee Acro didn't want to get caught for a reason. He wanted to see his brother open his eyes again. But how does that, like, uh like, stable her fears of him coming after her again. Bat? That's right, Regina. He's still alive, you know. I never knew. But now that Acro's been caught... Uh-huh. I know! What? I'll do it. I'll stay next to Bat as long as it takes. Until he opens his eyes, and then until he can meet Acro again. That's so sweet of you, Regina. I'm sorry, Acro. I'm sorry, Bat. Well, hopefully this is enough to give her a little peace of mind. Hey, Max. What is it, Mo? We really put you through a lot, didn't we, buddy? I'm sorry about what happened. So whenever you'd like to leave us, I'll pay your fee and rip up that contract. I understand. What a fabulous thing to do for me. I might even leave tomorrow. What's going to happen to the circus now? Ah, uh, that's the big question. Our ringmaster was really an amazing person, wasn't he? Even though he's not here anymore, everyone's sticking together. The staff, the performers, no one wants to leave the circus. That's why I've made a decision. What is it? I've decided that I'll take over as the new ringmaster. I'll turn this circus into the best circus this world has ever seen! The best circus in the world has ever seen? <laughs> Don't laugh! That's quite the goal. Yay, I can't wait! Then I guess that changes things. Huh? There's only one thing the best circus the world has ever seen needs. The world's best illusions. Which means this circus needs the best magician the world has ever seen. Max. Let's work together and make our circus super fabulous! What do you say, big guy? I don't know what to say. All I can say is thank you. Um... Regina? You're gonna help them out too, aren't you? Um, I don't know. Maybe the circus would be better off without me. What are you talking about, Regina? Why do you think that I brought you to court today? Uh... We've got to work together to make the very big circus bigger than it's ever been! Mo. Moe's right, sweetie pie. It can't be the very big circus without Regina Berry! Max... Nick! It seems like everything's gonna turn out alright here. I can't wait to see the best circus the world has ever seen! We'll save you the most fabulous seats! It'll take us a while to get ready, but I'm gonna order special whoopee cushion seats!
Why is it playing the tints? I see. What made the case? Yesterday's surprise raid, it really paid off just like you said it would, sir. Um, you had it all figured out, didn't you? Sir? It was just a theory. If Acro really was the killer, I thought this was the only way it could end. Especially if he was the defense attorney. You mean Vista Phoenix, right? Is it him? Of course, well, detective, my plane is about to leave. As for Mr. Acro's case, you need not worry. I plan to personally stop by the chief prosecutor's office as soon as I get back. It's the boy! Understood, sir. I'll be waiting for you. I'll be waiting for you, Mr. Edgeworth. Everyone kept saluting that he was dead, but he wasn't dead. Why were they all saying that he was dead? It makes no sense. It made no sense at all. All right, why is there a robot hand grabbing a teddy bear grenade? Why is there like, like a sumo wrestler monk man with a gear arms? Okay, but uh, like I knew that Edgeworth couldn't be dead. Not to mention, I don't I don't remember where, but like I looked up and like somewhere somehow saw like the cover to Justice for All. He's on the cover. Why would they be like, oh, yeah, Miles Edgeworth, he's dead. No way. <laughs> Granted, this is only the second game in the series, but I feel like they would milk that for everything it's worth and would have had that be a super duper big overarching thing where you take down the killer of Miles Edgeworth if it happened. Okay, we're not actually going to super continue. I just have to know how the next thing will start. I just have to know how the next thing will start. And then we'll stop. Now the moment you've all been waiting for. Who will be this year's Grand Prix Champion? Who will be our Hero of Heroes? Okay, there, will it be last year's runner-up Jammin' Ninja or maybe Captain Saipan? Lovely tropical island. I see the students at a certain starry school are raring to go, and global hero Anaki Kupon doesn't want to be left out without the prize. We hope Lady Luck is with all our heroes tonight. They look all weird except for like the ninja man. The winner of the third annual Hero of Heroes Grand Prix is me! Is this like the silver, like steel samurai thing? Uh, like a sequel? <laughs> Woo, it's the Steel Samurai! The true hero of the night has appeared! It looks like this year's Grand Prix goes to the Fantastic Warrior! The Nickel Samurai! Too bad, Jammin' Ninja! Looks like the title eluded you again this year! The Nickel Samurai, huh? Penny Nickels. Ha! <laughs> If Penny Nichols is playing that samurai, that would be hilarious. Doubtful, but hilarious. We're going back to the Gatewater Hotel? Okay. All right, yes! Did you hear that, Nick? Did you? The Nichols Samurai, he did it! Yeah, he sure did. I'm getting too old for this. I'm proud of the guy for doing the series justice. Um, so the person everyone was cheering for, I guess he got the prize? Yep. You know who we're talking about, right, Pearly? The Nickel Samurai? No, every Sunday I only watch the educational channel's Kids Masterpiece Theater. Okay, that's it. From now on, the Nickel Samurai. All the kids watch it. Do you like the Nickel Samurai too, Mr. Nick? Nah, Nick's an old fart, so he's not allowed to watch it anymore. That's right, but I do like the Kids Masterpiece Theater. <laughs> hey, I didn't know you were so young at heart, Nick. Mr. Nick, you're a grown-up. You're not allowed to watch it anymore. You're supposed to act your age and have interest that match. It's very important. Ah, uh, give it a rest, Pearly. Looks like I made the right choice in inviting everyone here. I'm glad you're all having a good time. <laughs> it's like a dream. <laughs> Too bad for the German Ninja, though. Last year he lost to the Pink Princess Warrior of Little Old Tokyo. I thought this might be his year. Yeah. Oh, hey, did anyone else think that Jammin' Ninja looked a bit different today? 
different? What do you mean? Um, well, he wasn't carrying his bright red guitar. Hey, you're right. Strange he'd walk around without his signature guitar. Uh, I will never understand these people and their shows. It's also nice to see Mr. Powers again. Anyway, Mr. Powers, thank you very much for tonight. <laughs> oh, it was nothing. I owe you one, so it's just my way of saying thanks. Hey, Nick, come on. It's time to get going to the lobby. There's a post-ceremony stage show that's supposed to start real soon. And then I heard there's going to be press conference after that. A press conference? Is he going to make a speech about winning this year's prize? Uh, well, not exactly. Something about the Nickel Samurai confessing something. Confessing? Sounds pretty serious. Ah, Nick, come on! You don't want us to be the last ones there, do you? Yeah, Mr. Nick, do you? Why me? The show never didn't even doesn't even start for another 20 minutes. <laughs> this is how it starts, okay? I will admit this is a It's cool to have like a follow-up to the uh Steel Samurai. There's a sequel apparently called The Nickel Samurai. It's nice to see Mr. Powers again. Uh, Edgeworth is alive and presumably going to be back. And apparently was the one who sent the surprise search, I guess, and was presumably the one who gave us the scarf. I don't understand it, but oh well. But yeah. I thought we would have more, but no, there, this is an interesting way to begin the final case. Presumably, I highly doubt this one also has a super duper rare fifth case, but who knows? Maybe it will. I am not psychic. But, yeah, this is interesting. But, considering that it'll be a bit before we get to a good stopping place. I just wanted to see where this would open up. I thought it would be a bit more bombastic and like, uh, well, I guess it is technically bombastic. We had the Nickel Samurai show up and blast past the Jammin' Ninja, who apparently doesn't have his ancient magic ninja electric guitar with him today. I also love the fact that there's like a super sentai common common uh, uh, rider like hero award show that's like out universe <laughs> that's just kind of hilarious to me but yeah we will definitely continue this another time i thought more would happen in the opening but at the same time it's very i do like that they kind of subvert your expectations like this surprise you actually play through the opening of these cases which is very engaging but I guess we will uh, give my thoughts on the uh, Big Berry Big Top turnaround roundabout that happened. It is a very odd case, but I like it. Much like the Steel Samurai before it, it is a pseudo filler case that also kind of moved things forward in certain aspects. It technically brought back, like, uh, Miles in a way that felt natural that that's cool but as for the mystery itself it went all over the place and i did find it quite interesting it's a little weird that ben and trilo kind of vanish near the end they have no importance despite the fact that they're meant to be like i guess they're meant to be the initial like oh trilo the puppet is a jackass and is like uh going for Regina's affections and whether it be Ben living vicariously through his puppet or the puppet actually being an outlet for a split personality or whatever Hollywood nonsense you want to say the fact does remain that they were kind of building him up to be the fall guy to the player's expectations but then he just kind of vanishes entirely Mo was never going to be the killer I kind of thought maybe Regina could have but the moment that we really dug into uh, Acro's stuff, it was obvious that he had to be involved somewhat, especially considering that he literally admitted to writing the murder note and giving it to Regina. That should have been a big thing that I should have noted that maybe it was an accident that he killed the ringmaster and he was going for Regina, but she was just such a dumbass she didn't think, oh... Somebody might think I'm a murderer, but I'm not a murderer. I'm going to post it on the note board. 
but I still don't see like then again they did cover up what happened to Bat so maybe that could explain why they killed Leon but hmm, I don't know it's still a little wonky and kind of frayed out in certain directions but as you play it it makes sense even though my idea that the big tarp thing, they just brought so much tar attention to the tarp in the lounge plot, or like, like the log, I'm trying to think what's the word, I can't think of it, but the employee housing area plaza, there was the big tarp thing. I thought it would hold like a crane or something, but I suppose just having a pulley system outside your window works too. But I did enjoy playing it. I do admit that it would probably be... I would have enjoyed it less if I had experienced it completely blind and didn't have the warnings from chat saying, Hey, just so you know, this is a, a shenanigans section. And just so you know, there's some shenanigans with this piece of evidence. So it's possible... Because Just look to the second uh, case in which I went all over the place wondering what the hell I was supposed to do... Uh, that eventually ended up being there's no blast burn on Maya's sleeve, so she was far away when she was shot. Well, shot at. So, it's not like there wasn't precedent for there being wonkiness. But having some slight guiding hands there for that wonkiness, I say that it was interesting. I do kind of find it odd that the game basically said, haha, pressing is useless at the beginning, despite the fact that there were at least a few points where you needed to press. In the end, I liked the big top turn a uh, turnabout runabout, but it's a very interesting case. It's different. And also, that's another thing. This case is bringing in old characters, apparently, and calling back to things. It's obviously going to bring Miles back. Similar to how the second case was kind of calling back to past things as well and expanding on, like, the Fey household. So the Big Berry, Big Top case was very interesting and a breath of fresh air because it was pretty much solely new characters. The only re reoccurring characters from previous cases were Gumshoe and Frenzika and technically Miles Edgeworth as a ghost. So in the end, it's very... My brain just leapt to the idea, what if Miles Edgeworth is the Nickel Samurai? Hmm. I doubt it, but that would be hilarious. <laughs> Sorry, right? I had to go play a Nickel Samurai for a while to really find myself again. But again, the Big Berry Big Top case was interesting. I will say that it's probably the... Mm, no, I was, I, at first I was going to say that it paled in comparison even to the tutorial case, but no. It's too interesting to be stacked up against the initial tutorial case for this game. The tutorial case is very good. The second case with the May, uh, the, the May, the Fey household was a lot of fun and interesting and was a very, like, thought-provoking case. The Big Berry Big Top case was lesser in terms of like making me think of what could have happened but it still had that it at moments and I did pick up on the key moments like oh the lion obviously sneezed because of pepper and that's what the decisive evidence was in the box a bottle of pepper and similar to like oh the silhouette wasn't max it was the bust of max that was stolen so it definitely worked as a case. I would say that the Big Ter Big Berry Big Top is still better than the second case from the last game. As much as it pains me, the death of Mia in that case, like, just the way that case was done is wonky in places and feels like it needed more grandiosity, but they needed to kill Mia. It just feels off. But the Big Berry Big Top, I feel like, just works. It feels like it's as grandiose as it needs to be. The characters are interesting. And yeah, just yeah, it's really it's really good. 
I would still put the second case of this game over it. And let me think, what cases would I put under the Big Berry Big Top? Hmm. Again, the second case from the first game, the tutorial from the first game, because it's not so much that it's bad, it's just very basic. In hindsight, the second case of the first game is just kind of underwhelming for who the villain of that case is. So the... And plus, again, because we knew who the killer was, it kind of uh, shut down the mystery aspect of it a bit. But... I think... Big Berry Big Top it go is above the first tutorial case, the second tutorial case, and the second case from the first game. But I feel like the Steel Samurai Turnabout Goodbyes and Rise from the Ashes and the uh, 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 what was it? Tur re reunion Turnabout or the second case from Justice for All this game are above Big Berry Circus. I feel like the Steel Samurai was a more engaging mystery and just had a better flow to it, but the Big Berry Big Top is still an interesting case in its own right. So basically, it's still pretty down there on my like overall like list ranking, if only because I feel like so many of the other cases are better than it. But I still enjoy the Big Berry Big Top as its own thing. It was still fun. And I don't think it's really that bad, except for the weird design decision with the Moe's testimony. And, uh... I do feel like there were bits and pieces of, uh... Like... Landmines, I guess? In the... Uh, like the final testimony parts like oh we should search his room and stuff but at the same time they're mostly just f you need to think logically we would have found it or somebody else would have found it and like so yeah not bad there's still many better cases but for its wonky mo testimony I still think that the big very big top case is a very nice breather case I don't know if there are that many things you could do to improve it for what it is. I don't know. Like, again, Ben and Trilo feel superfluous past their testimony, but I guess a decent amount of... Because that's the thing. I feel like Ben and Trilo should have had more, like, insertion into the case. Because if we look at all the previous, like, cases where you're, like, wandering around with a lot of characters... All of them kind of interweave in and out of the case, and even when they finally leave, like Lada, it makes sense. Lada was uh, inserted into the original final case of the original Ace Attorney game because she was an eyewitness to the supposed murder. And once her role was finished in that case, she had no personal bearing anymore, so she was allowed to leave and it didn't like feel like anything was lost. Ben and Trilo, however, they feel too interlocked with the circus to not play a role in the end. Like, take a look at Mo. Mo played a role throughout the vast majority of the case, and I feel like Ben and Trilo should have shared that kind of thing as well. But they just didn't, and were, after initially talking to them in the final investigation day, they just have nothing to do when I feel like they maybe should have at least had a little bit more to them. Maybe they should have showed up at the end as well with Mo and Regina to say, yeah, we're gonna get the, we're gonna make the circus the greatest as ever. It's gonna have the greatest ventriloquist after all. And then that's when Max could come in. I just feel like Ben and Trilo should have been involved a bit more is what I'm saying. But besides that and the little bit of wonky testimony part that isn't like out of spec for this game again the blast burn on the sleeve but yeah big berry circus is a good case in my eyes it has a little wonky places but let's just say it was nowhere near as wonky as rise from the ashes and i still liked rise from the ashes <laughs> 
But yes, this is a very fun game. And uh, since we've been going for two hours, I do believe that that will do it for now. But yes, thank you very much for watching. If you want more from me, I have two YouTube channels, an edited content YouTube channel, Neon Icy Wings, where I swear content is coming eventually, and then streaming content channel, Neon Icy Games, where I stream to and eventually upload all of these streams for posterity and just recording. And then if you prefer to watch on Twitch rather than YouTube, I also dual stream to twitch.tv slash Neon Icy Wings. If you want more and more from me, like art, like my little avatar in the corner, you can see me post art to my various social medias like Twitter, Tumblr, DeviantArt, Inkblot, and Newgrounds, although Twitter is now slowly becoming a dumpster fire where they're threatening to destroy your account if you don't log in for 30 days. Huh. Oh, Captain, my Captain. But yes, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you dudes next time. Bye-bye.